It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to one of our favorite spots, Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Today, boy, what a matchup. Two NFL franchises with so much history, so much tradition, getting set to do battle here as it'll be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Chicago Bears. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. Uh, Charles the Bears trying to piece things back together after a tough 3-14 and 14 campaign. But they've got one guy they can build around, though, and that's Justin Fields. And he is quite the talent, and they're trying to build around him indeed because they've added pieces in free agency, added pieces in the NFL draft. They want to get away from him having to use his legs as much as he did in 2022. They want to be able to throw the ball and move the ball downfield that way as well. And meanwhile, for the visiting Packers, one era ends, another begins. And this is a team that finished 8-9 last year, missed out on the playoffs at the very end. What needs to happen for the green and gold to be playoff bound once more? Everyone's focusing on how they're starting over on the offensive side of the ball. But to me, they have an accumulation of talent on defense that needs to play like a top 10, top 5 defense in the NFL. Slot man moves right. A man who led the league in yards per carry last year. It's Khalil Herbert to about the 23. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Fields to commit there for a Chicago first. All right, you and I both know that was a lucky play, but you got to give him credit. Going up on the tip and catching that one. Stayed with it, made his own luck, didn't he? And, and, and he used his size there. Had a defensive back mentality to go up and get the ball on the tip, but used his size. I mean, tight ends, going up and getting it, sometimes they can knock people out of the way and finish the play. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. Execution was one of their watchwords leading up to this one. And on that play, able to execute brilliantly here on this opening drive. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long, and this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal because just a few plays ago, they looked like they were headed towards the end zone. Open man, he finds Kamek. Touchdown, Chicago. Their first passing touchdown of the ball game, and they go to the big tight end in those sure hands, and he provides the score. Some of them looked like they were focused on taking away other weapons, and he certainly made them regret that because he found the soft spot, ended up taking it to the end zone. Nice throw, too, to complete the play. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. So the drive there took six plays. And it was all capped off by Cole Komet with a touchdown catch. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. So here are the new-look Packers set to go to work. 
And at the helm here in 2023, a lot of eyes on this man in his fourth NFL season, Jordan Love. This is set up now to be the true beginning of Love's NFL career because he's finally out from under the shadow of Aaron Rodgers, and Green Bay is giving him this season to prove he can be their starter. Four years after he was drafted in the first round, we'll find out Love is the next decade-long starter for the Green Bay Packers. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Oh, there was plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. A guy coming off a career high in rushing yards last year. Here's Aaron Jones. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Holding offense. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. And the Bears in the nickel. No, wait, they're in the dime. Six DBs out there on third. Could play an exotic coverage. Throwing. Love. And that is incomplete. That was the first third down try of the game. And clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. On the return is Pettis. Now a hit and a loose football. Well, it looks like one of the DBs has it. And that's what friends are for. <laughs> As the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turned it over there. That's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. Well, just two series in here, Charles, but everything's gone to script so far. They got a touchdown on their first drive. Their defense holds, and now they've got a chance to take a two-score lead. And to co-sign with you, exactly the start they scripted up. And really, that kind of start, that can set the tone for the game for them. And a result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Back in Chicago, ready for the second quarter. It's the Bears in possession. On fourth down, Chicago brings out Trenton Gill. And it's a fake here on fourth and inches. Powers through it. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe ten. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. Now this worked, so I guess I shouldn't be nitpicking too much, but they only had a couple of inches to go. Why fake punt? Yeah, I'm with you on that one. If you're going to go ahead and try and pick it up in that short of a distance, I wouldn't even go to fake punt formation. This is like using up a big play for no reason at all. Leave your offense on the field and pick it up. But again, what were we doing? We're nitpicking, yeah, right? Because they did get it. It worked. Between the last two plays, they moved it over half the length of the football field. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Here we 
go. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Go. On first and 10, it's Herbert. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the five now, second and a yard. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and it's still a give up the middle. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Give him two yards. That sets him up first and goal. To throw his fields toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an outer boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Line of scrimmage again, the four yard line. Second and goal. Fields going to hold on to it. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two minute warning. Foreman. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two yard line. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Jair Alexander. And the Packers are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, Charles certainly circled that play. We might have to revisit it later. They had three in their back pocket. They go for it on fourth and goal and throw the pick. Well, you know we're still in the first half. A bold call nonetheless. And I guess the book might have said, take the three. But it looks like they burned the book and just said, give me the analytics. And the analytics said, go for it. Didn't work out. Following the interception, Love will find the blur complete. The clock rolls as the Packers look to hurry things up. Now Love. Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. And this drive will start on the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. And they'll take possession already in the red zone and in a great spot to add points to the scoreboard. And, Brandon, how many times have we seen a defense with a lot of field behind them get even more aggressive, right? They feel like they've got them not pinned down, but in a favorable spot for them. And they took advantage of it there. Got a nice interception and set up their offense in great shape. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. And now following that turnover, they've got an opportunity here to try to cash in with good field position before intermission. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, they certainly knew their challenge as this series began. And they got a stop on play number one. Goal now, get two more stops and limit the damage to a field goal. That's more. Touchdown, Bears! DJ Moore, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Bears are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. The defense is doing their best, but they're struggling right now. They'll look for some help from their own offense to keep them in the game. Santos now to add the PAT. And it's good to make it 14-0. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them. And plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Packers offense set to go. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill right. all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. 
And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Here's Love. He has it complete to Christian Watson. The clock rolls as the Packers look to hurry things up. To pass, here's Jordan Love. And now the ball's out, fumble near midfield. And it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they get the football, they'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. But the Bears going to take over now late in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. The Bears in good field position to start out first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Following the fumble recovery, Fields. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, he worked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. He delivers a big play here for this offense. Here we go. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. On second and ten, Fields. Now he's got it! Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. clock will stop as he's able to get up and spike it here. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Here we go. Good. Here's Fields. And he fins him up. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields as the first half is winding down. And the Bears will extend their lead here just before halftime. They talk about built to run the football, whether you're calling it on design running plays or him breaking out into the open field after trying to pass the football. Justin Fields knows where the end zone is. Eight rushing touchdowns last season. Only Jalen Hurts had more. Now the point after try for Santos. And it is now 21 to nothing. Five plays there on that drive. And it was all capped off by the Justin Fields touchdown run. He took it in himself. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. About set to get this drive started, the Green Bay offense at the line. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Love. Throw right side, hauled in by Dobbs. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Give him 18 on that play, and Green Bay has the first as well. Here we go. First down, going to the air with Love. That's caught by the rookie, Jaden Reed. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And that is 
no good. And this will stay a three touchdown game. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Packers set to get the football first and they are trailing on the scoreboard as we resume action, ready for the third quarter. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. Here's the Packers offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. Good sure hands there from a guy not accustomed to catching a whole lot of passes. But how about the way he was able to pull that one in and pick up good yardage? On second down, it's Jones. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. And this is caught inside the five. Touchdown, Packers. Christian Watson, 61 yards. And the Packers are able to cut into that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard and you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Carlson's extra point up and good. And they'll cut the lead to 21-7. So now Carlson, after the touchdown, called on to send this one away. And this take it in at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You could say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Now a deep throw there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. He's going to look deep for more. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown. DJ Moore. The second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears take a three-touchdown lead. 
this offense. They were dynamic in the first half. The halftime break, that didn't slow them down at all. Big strike here in the third quarter. It's almost as if they were saying, it's not just our skill in the first half that's getting this done, it's confidence as well. And confidence has taken over this game in a big way. How about these strikes that we're seeing? Santos now to add the PAT. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it concludes with a touchdown reception by D.J. Moore. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. Packers all set to go again. That means we'll see Christian Watson. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, makes, you do. You makes get you hungrier. You get greedy in a good way. To throw now. Here's Love. That's complete to Dobbs. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And that little deke, the juke move that we saw, able to give him the first down yardage before he's brought down. So it's the big left tackle who gets tagged with a hold. And sometimes you're actually executing the block well, and he starts to slip off of you, and instinctively you reach out and grab him. And when it's done like that, it's often seen by the official and called. Oh, well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jalen Johnson. Now he's loose down the left sideline. And they will finally get him down as he's all the way to the 36-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. There's D.J. Moore as he and the rest of the offense head back out there. And now he's inching closer to a 200-yard game. He's been so solid. And he is really denting the pride of the guys playing defense, too, because there are certain barriers that you just don't want to give up. Never want to give up a 100-yard rusher, a 100-yard receiver. He's closing in on 200 yards. Wow, that's a really big game. And they'll begin by running the option. So they're able to capitalize there on the short field, and that might prove to be the score that turns out the lights. The party's over. Oh, sorry about that. That's an old reference there, folks. But, yeah, they've been the better of the two teams by far, and that's great complimentary football right there. Defense gets the turnover, sets up the short field, and the offense goes right out and scores to open up a pretty sizable lead. Now the point after try for Santos. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. Green Bay's offense ready to go again. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD, and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. 
Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, Let's just say it's been unusual. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Love now. That one caught downfield by Watson. Room to maneuver at the 35. And it's a Packers touchdown. Christian Watson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Packers get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, CD. And, well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense and he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him and he delivered and made it a three-score game. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the Bears' hands team able to pounce on it and get the football. By the fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. He pushes through a would-be tackler to get about three yards, second down. At this stage of the game, with the score where it is, the key here is to in bounds, and he did just that. Not by a huge margin, but he stayed in. And those come up in what we like to call winning edge meetings. The things that you have to do, late game situations, kicking situations, it doesn't matter what it is, the things you have to do to win a game, and that comes up in that meeting, then you practice it, they've got to be happy to see it executed, being able to stay in bounds and work the clock. The offense on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This time it's third and three, and he will have the Bears first down. It won't be by much. He needed three, and he got three, barely, but the mark shows first down. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Rashawn Gary, the man to bring him down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. Second down and six now from the 26. On second down, a run with Herbert. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. I think it's fairly safe to call this game over, but they're still trying to bomb it downfield and add to their lead. Almost makes you start to feel for the defense and root for them a little bit, too. Santos' kick is up and through. 
So after five touchdowns offensively, hey, maybe it's time to get the kicker a little work, and he's able to connect there. I love that empathetic side of you. You're worried about him getting some action, getting to be a part of the game. Well, he got in and got it done. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Second down, Love. And his throw is going to be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get them off the field with a three and out. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Ready? They'll run for it with Dillon. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. Jordan Love ready on first down here. He's got the hookup with Dobbs. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Love now to pass on first down. Throw left side complete. That's Jones. Touchdown! Aaron Jones. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Packers get a bit closer. Well, we know he has decent hands out of the backfield. That's the first time, Charles, they've targeted him in the passing game, and it pays dividends. And I love the design, too, because they kept him in the backfield, made the defense think run first before they swung him out of there. And you're right, with his hands, they might want to throw it to him just a little bit more. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. The Chicago offense set to get started. Well, see, this is the ideal situation in the fourth quarter. You come out here late, not much time on the clock with a comfortable lead and put the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, this offense, all game long, they've been powerful. They've been dangerous. You're exactly right. They can end this one on their own terms. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. A lot more was on the line in this one than just defending your home field, CD. They defend their home field against a division rival and get the victory. So this one feels a little extra special. It has to, right? There's always just a little more emphasis on games like this. Everyone talks about playing each game the exact same way. But you have both know that is not true. Division rival, 